Hey everyone, and thank you for tuning back into Bad Boy Gaming. My name is Joey Moss, and I appreciate every one of you who watch this channel. A great way to support the channel for absolutely free is simply by subscribing or hitting the bell and like button. They go a long, long way. What are we getting into today? Top 26. That's right, 26 most expensive, most valuable cards in modern. And we'll discuss a little on why they're at those price points. Let's just dive headfirst into this. Coming in at number 26, Dark Depths, $31. It comes into play with 10 ice counters on it, and then for three, remove an ice counter from Dark Depths. This is the crazy part. When Dark Depths has no ice counters on it, sacrifice it. If you do, put an indestructible legendary 2020 Black Avatar creature token with flying named Merit Lege into play. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I like a legendary snow land. You don't see that too often. Definitely a really powerful card. I mean, it's a 2020 indestructible legendary. What did we just come out with recently? The, the Great Worm? That thing's a 16-16 indestructible. But I'm pretty sure Dark Depths, it's a little easier to get this into play. Especially with things that help you remove counters and whatnot. Awesome card. Black Cleave Cliffs. Gosh, I remember when this thing was just sitting at like 15 10 bucks. Uh, it's from Scar the Mirrodin. Really cool. Um, I actually opened up quite a few sets of this, and luckily I was able to pull quite a few uh, Black Cliff Cliffs. But this thing, yeah, um, when you have black uh, and red aggro decks being a thing, you're going to see price jumps. Uh, this card actually was higher at one point. It was at 45 Now it came down to 32 bucks. Blight Steel Colossus. Just love the artwork on this. $32.50. 12 to bring out. It's a monster, but man, it has trample and infect. So if there's a way to make this thing indestructible, just one hit, your opponent's dead. He just drops to the floor with that infect ability. For anyone who doesn't know, infect, each player, once they have 10 infect counters on them, they're dead. That's it. And for every one point of damage dealt to a person uh, or to a player um, from a creature with infect, it's one point, so... Each start with 10. It's kind of like half your life total starting out for uh, games of uh, modern standard whatnot. If Blightsteel Colossus will be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Blightsteel Colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library. Just a behemoth. And no, it's a golem. It's not a behemoth. Arcbound Ravager. Really cool card. $33.15. Uh, the good thing about this, it's a great top deck in late game. Uh, it even enables Ink Moth uh, kills like out of nowhere, basically. Uh, evasion for finishing blows. I mean, the, the, the list kind of goes on. It's a great blocker. Uh, it can blank lifelink. Uh, what it does, sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on Arcbound Ravager. Modular one. Pretty, pretty cool. That's sitting at $33.15. Ensnaring Bridge. Thirty-four twenty. This would be the eighth edition. Yeah, the border's a little goofy. What do you want from me? I took a screenshot of it. And Snowing Bridge, three to bring out artifact. Creatures with power greater than the number of cards in your hand can't attack. Yep, that could shut down some big uh, some big decks quickly. 3420. This came out, I think the first time it was released was in Tempest? Or Stronghold? I want to say it was that block, though. Misty Rainforest, 3925. This thing actually went down a bit. This is from Zendikar. Pay one life, sacrifice Misty Rainforest, search your library for a forest or island. Good old fetch lands, man. Awesome cards. Um, they're always going to maintain a high price point. I don't think we're going to see uh, these sort of lands reprinted anytime soon. I, they may never even reprint these again. That's kind of crazy me saying that, but I'm at least not in a standard set. I don't believe we'll ever see these reprinted again. Bitter Blossom, 3980. I made a deck around this card. Pretty neat. Definitely amazing for fairy tribals. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and put a 1-1 black fairy rogue creature token with flying into play. Oh, yeah. Fun ways to spam tokens and whatnot. This deck fits into those, especially if you got some life gain kind of decks because losing that one life every turn is a bummer. But this does fit in nicely with uh, life link uh, or life gain and also uh, just mass tokens. Good old tribal stuff. Yeah, dog. Tig. Two drop from Celestia. Well, yeah. Legendary creature. Non-creature spells with converted mana cost four or greater can't be played. Non-creature spells with X in their mana cost can't be played. 
that will shut down stuff left and right. Definitely a good sideboard card as well. $41.10. Liliana, the last hope. I do apologize about the quality of this image. It was difficult to find one. $41.30, three drop. This thing was at, I think, $12 when it first appeared. And it is just constantly climbed. You ever just wish you got in early on some of these cards? Like, even in the in the standard recently, that new Phoenix, that was $1.50 when it hit. That card's at $20 now. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Um, but what Liliana does, very, very strong. Up to one target creature gets minus two, minus one until your uh, next turn. Amazing. Minus two, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And the emblem is ridiculous. You get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step. Put X22 two, two black zombie creature tokens on the battlefield where X is two plus the number of zombies you control. That gets out of hand. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I actually had a fan send me one of these not too long ago. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Isn't it eight drop? $41.85. Ugin the Spirit Dragon deals three damage to target creature or player. It's minus X. Exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more colors. And it's 10. It's ultimate. Would you call it ultimate? What do you guys call the, the last one where you get an emblem or whatnot? I like to call it its ultimate. Maybe we can call it its fatality. It's like finisher, like Mortal Kombat. Who knows? You gain seven life, draw seven cards, and put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Ridiculous. Sliver Legion. Who wants to see slivers again? Who wants to see slivers return to standard? I would die to see them return back to standard. I would be in heaven. Five drop. Of all the colors, all sliver creatures get plus one, plus one for each other sliver in play. Just phenomenal. This definitely is a great in commander and whatnot and just in your average uh, sliver deck 4420 yeah these are not cheap cards guys tafiri hero of dominaria welcome to the show my standard friend he's in standard right now he's at 47 dollars. it speaks volume uh that wizards actually does print cards that are worth money i think dominaria is a very undervalued set but it is hit or miss on those booster boxes very similar to like master's product you either do really well or you bomb miserably I recently have bombed. So Fury, I'm pretty sure we all know what he does. Draw a card at the beginning of the next end step, untap two lands. It's amazing for control decks because you can have your counter spell in hand and still able to counter something because you can tap out, untap two at the end, and then boom, you can counter uh, next turn as well. And that draw ability, ridiculous. The minus three put target now and permanent to its owner's library, third from the top, incredible. And the emblem, whenever you draw a card, this is ridiculous, exile target permanent and opponent controls. <sighs> Enough said. Verdant Catacombs. Again, I don't see these coming out or reprinted anytime soon. Probably another Master Set or something similar to that or some special, I don't know, promotion Wizards runs. But I doubt we'll ever see it printed again in Standard. Verdant Catacombs, hold, uh, pay one life, and then go ahead and search. Dark Confidant, what is good? At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. It's an amazing card. And I do like the flavor text. Greatness at any cost. Sword of Fire and Ice. These swords are... I, I love those swords. I do want to collect all of them. Unfortunately, I'm not a rich fella. So I won't be able to anytime soon. But Sword of Fire and Ice, $58.10, three drop equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from red and from blue. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player... Sort of fire and ice deals two damage to target creature or player, and you draw a card equipped for two. Very strong, very powerful equipment card. Scalding Tarn, 6185. Not much more to say on these. Snapcaster Mage. Oh, yeah. I love this artwork. Anyone else a huge fan of this artwork? I just think it's so cool. It's got the flash when Snapcaster Mage enters the battlefield, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. Gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. Just fun little tricks to play with the Snapcaster builds. Uh, basically a four of in almost any of those kind of decks. And recently they printed another card very similar to this in a sorcery uh, for standard. Pretty cool. I think that's why we saw Snapcaster go down a little bit. Cavern of Souls. 69 big ones. As Cavern of Souls enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. You tap it, you add one color to your mana pool. This next ability is ridiculous. 
Tap it. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. And that spell can't be countered. The spell can't be countered. That's why this thing is so powerful. And the flexibility of the mana. Incredibly, incredibly powerful card. What's even more ridiculous, it's not legendary. It's, it's just a normal land. Non-basic. This should have been legendary if you ask me. That's why the price is so high on this card. Outrageous. Karn Liberated. You big beast. Planeswalker. Uh, you will see this card uh, in quite a few decks. More so your Tron. Target player exiles a card from his or her hand for plus four. It's minus three. Exile target permanent. <sighs> Nuts. Turn three. Turn three, you can drop this thing with Tron. That's where you have all the Urza lands out. Minus 14. Restart the game. Leaving in exile all non aura permanent cards. Exile with Karn Liberated. Then put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Man, fatalities are great. Engineered Explosive. 76, 75. Sunburst. <coughs> Excuse me. This comes into play with a charge counter on it for each color of mana used to pay its cost. Reduce Sacrifice Engineered Explosives. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Engineered Explosives. Yeah, you can basically board wipe all your opponent's tokens, um, and it's got other uses as well. Just ridiculous card, and it's only two to do that. Noble Hierarch. I did pull one of these. It actually dodged a bullet. Actually, it was more of like a chainsaw or table saw. I saw it a pack in, uh, a pack in half of the... Um, uh, whichever sets this is from with the promos in it. And it was a foil version that dodged a saw. Crazy video. You have to go back and watch that one. Exalted. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one. It's the end of turn. It's only a one drop. But you can add three different colors of mana to your mana pool. That's just ridiculous. Uh, and the Exalted helps as well. 7745. Noble Hierarch is steady going to be around that price. Horizon Canopy. 80 big ones. This is the Future Sight version. Pay one life. And you can add a forest, or green, or white to your mana pool. For one, sacrifice rising canopy, draw a card. These kind of lands are always going to maintain a very expensive high price point. Liliana of the Veil. My, probably the most gorgeous artwork I've seen on a magic card. I mean, what is not to like about that? S Sarah Angel or Liliana? Who are you going with? Oh, man. I guess it depends on a few things. But 83.25. Plus one, each player discards a card. Minus two, target player sacrifices a creature. Minus six, separate all permanents. Target player controls into two piles. That player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of his or her choice. Liliana is always going to be a very expensive card. Probably not going to see a reprint of this anytime soon. Tarmogoyf, you nasty son of a gun. 85.15. He fluctuates. He was up to 140 not long ago. Now he's all the way back down to 85.15. Uh, its power is equal to the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one silly card jace the mind sculptor this thing was recently at 140 bucks 135 bucks um before, when it got unbanned 88 dollars jace the mind sculptor still kind of curious what it says right in here it almost looks like it spells something it's crazy uh, a very very powerful planeswalker this thing just sees a, a bunch of play not it, it kind of went down recently though it hasn't been as many i mean i think teferi actually has been like in a few decks instead of Jace here, but again, just a very, very powerful Planeswalker. Mox Opal. Hello, gorgeous. You number one. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Activate his ability only if you control three or more artifacts. This is why Scars of Mirrodin is so expensive. You got, I think, what, four cards on the top 25 list. Uh, 26, if you want to count Black Cleave. Outrageous. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Activate his ability only if you control three or more artifacts. What more is there to say? Affinity and beyond. If you enjoyed this content, guys, I really do appreciate if you're subscribed. Hit the like button. Hit the thumbs up, whatever you want to call it. Hit the bell button. That'll notify you when I drop a new video. You can be one of the first to watch it. And if you're interested also in helping support the channel any further, see the description links in every video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Joey Moss, Bad Boy Gaming, PLA.